Yo guys, what is up and welcome back to a new video. Now, as you can see, I'm right outside custody of the Exeter Headquarters Police Station and we are going to run through a full video today as to what would happen to you if you were stopped under the influence of drink and drugs. Stay tuned, guys. It's going to be sick and we'll join you just after the intro. Peace. This is George. George was involved in an RTC in Exeter earlier this evening. He's tested positive at the roadside with a score of 45 on the roadside device. He was therefore arrested for failing the roadside test and on suspicion of driving with excess alcohol above the prescribed limit. Okay, George, do you understand why you've been arrested? Yes, sir. If you have a look at that screen, that shows that I've given you your rights. If you haven't I've recorded them correctly, you want to sign on that pad. Thank you. Right, George, what I need you to do then is take anything that you've got out of your pockets for me and just put it up there on the counter. Have you got a belt? Yeah. Yeah, you need to take the belt off. You need to take your shoes off for me as well because of the laces. Okay, you can pop the shoes in the bag for me. Thank you. Okay, now what I need you to do is just turn around for me and we're just going to do a quick search. Okay, there's nothing else on you that's going to harm me or you. Uh, right, thanks, Graham. And we're in the intox room here. This is where we would bring somebody that we booked into custody uh, for a potential drink drive offence. Um, and today we're going to use this machine and we're going to show you, with the help of George, who's going to blow into it for us, um, how this works and how we would deal with anyone that's brought in for one of those offences. Create a seal around the end of the tube yeah. and then it's a long, hard blow into the machine. Okay, and the It says 2 minutes 50 though. I can't blow out for 2 minutes 50. No, you don't have to blow for 2 minutes 50. That's just how long you've got yeah. to do it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, that's it, that's fine, you can stop. Oh, that's one. So as you can see, GCM, or yours truly, so to speak, is not an alcoholic. Right guys, so I'm as sure as you can tell, right now I'm next to the breathalyzer machine in the intox room at the Exeter headquarters police station. Now me and Owen are joined by a professional right now who is currently off camera that we can ask some specialist questions to that hopefully answer any questions that you might have had in regards to drink and drugs and driving in general. So, one question I would really like to ask, how does it differ in regards to the size of person and how much they can drink? Okay, everybody's different as you know, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter, um, it's the drink as well. So if you take the alcohol aside, so you all drink the same drink, but everyone's going to absorb it differently depending on mm -hmm. their age, the type of food they've been eating, whether they've been eating at all, their demeanour, the state of mind time of day, how tolerant they are to it, and all of those factors, so that's completely random. So their physique does come into it as well, because obviously you mentioned off camera that they've got their obviously their fat content, their water content, their muscle mass. Not that I'm a professional, but I have had to instruct some people on nights out before that just because you're different in size doesn't mean you're more capable of drinking certain amounts of alcohol. Do not drive if you've had any alcohol full stop, and if you're querying that, just wait 24 hours and then you'll have that peace of mind. So guys, as we're in the intox room right now, the Exeter Headquarters Police Station, right next to the breathalyzer machine, it gives me a really good opportunity to ask the specialist behind the camera your thoughts on section four. So by all means, fill us in. Okay, section four is all about no limit is the limit. So you can't have anything in your system that's going to impair you. Mm -hmm. So we look at predominantly alcohol first to rule that out, and then we look for drugs. And if those two fail, it could be medical, it could be uh, fatigue. So mm -hmm. the drink and the drug side of it, we can obviously sort out the alcohol with this machine and then we go through the blood or the urine procedure to look for drugs. So that means if your behaviour and your driving is so impaired and we can't get any specimen out of you, breath, blood or urine, it's all based on the officer's opinion mm -hmm. as well. So guys, just while we're here, one of my most common comments is definitely in regards to the officer's opinion. So you're an officer, Owen, kindly address the viewers and let them know your thoughts. So obviously with things like section four, it is going to be based on the officer's opinion of your driving. And if we consider that you're impaired or your manner of driving would suggest that you might be impaired. So we do the test by the roadside, we can do the impairment tests, and then we can bring you back to custody and we can take the blood and the urine and we can have a look what's in your system. 
and we can test for any drug really that we want to look at. There's a set standard of drugs that we will test for, but if we think there's something else as well, i.e. if we're, we're looking for maybe ketamine, we can also look for anything that's mixed with the ketamine. So anything that we think that could possibly have impaired your driving. And then our evidence and our opinion is given to the court. But ultimately it's the court's decision based on reasonable doubt as to whether they convict you of the offence or not. So now we've moved into the surgery within the custody unit and this is where we would bring George if we were looking to take bloods. Okay, so if for any reason maybe George couldn't blow on the intoxilizer or George had found a drug swipe by the side of the road and we were looking at bloods or for section 4 as we've already covered, this is where we'd bring George um, and this is where we'd be looking to take the bloods from him. It's not me that takes the bloods, thank goodness. Um, here we have a healthcare professional um, who does all that for us um, and we go through various forms and things in order to be able to do that. So we're going to get George ready to take some blood um, and then uh, we'll see what happens. I hate needles. Guys, we do have a specialist off camera now, but I would love to take this opportunity to ask you, can you talk to us about CBD? But CBD is definitely a hot topic in the UK at the moment, so do you have anything that maybe you could educate us with? The best advice is not to take it at all. We only have 0.02% THC CBD oil in this country, it's higher in Europe. The more you take, the more it's going to be in your body. For one part of the offence, you'd have to take a lot of it to exceed that level that you're permitted to take. For the section 4, any of that level could be detected, then you're committing an offence. So long story short, any amount of CBD full stop could give you reason to look further. So guys, this is actually a really good opportunity for me to talk to you about something that is actually very, very important that a lot of you might not have considered. Now, although maybe an offence for being stopped with cannabis or being stopped when you've been drinking might only perceive to you to be only six points or a brief driving ban or something similar, there are huge outcomes as a result of being stopped just like that that can affect you later on in life. So we're going to use the specialist again behind the camera to basically give you guys a slight insight as to how something like that could really affect your future. Yeah, we'll take an accident or a collision for a start. You know, we have certain sensing guidelines, but you're going to add in things like drinking drugs to that. It's called aggravating factors. So things will start to accumulate anyway, and that's in the sentencing. But there's also something that not many people know about called the high-risk offender barrier. And what that is, there are three categories. Number one is if you fail to provide any evidential specimen without a reasonable excuse. Number two is if you blow the 85 micrograms in breath, for example, an equivalent. And the other one is if you've done this twice in a 10-year period. Mm -hmm. Now what that means is you'll get done with that offence anyway. But also, um, if you have a licensed shotgun, shotgun licence, firearms licence, licence and alcohol and things, they all will also be affected if you get done with drink driving. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah. The other thing, of course, is emigration. If you were thinking of going to Canada or New Zealand or something like that, it's probably going to limit your resources to do that. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Also, travelling. If you thought about going to the United States, there are certain parts of the United States that won't have you with that criminal record. Mm -hmm. Getting a hire car is almost impossible. Your insurance will just trip. Oh, wow. Okay. So it can go on and on. So that's a high risk offender. Guys, now I know this is slightly off topic, but a long time ago I did actually lose my license through the totting up procedure. To give you the detail, I basically did about 34 and a 30, three or four times. I was young, I was foolish, and I've made those mistakes, and obviously I've learned from them. But losing my license, even for that six month period, made such a difference to me at the time as a self-employed personal trainer. So again, I know that didn't affect me massively in comparison to what the lady behind the camera was mentioning, but it goes to show guys, think of the bigger picture. It might just be that one split in the park with your friends. It might just be drinking a little bit too much and taking that risk just to drive just around the corner to get yourself home. Think about the bigger picture. There is so much more to it than just, oh, I feel okay, I'm fine. I'm a professional drinker, I've been out with the boys. We can all relate to that in some way or another, guys. Peer pressure is a tough one and we have all been through it. So if this doesn't give you any reason to actually believe what they're saying, I don't know what will. So I really hope that you can let us know in the comments anything that you're maybe questioning that we can address in future videos. If there's anything that we've uncovered that you didn't already know about, please let us know. But more importantly, I think we've got lots more to offer. You've blood tested me. You've basically alcohol tested me as well. Is there anything else you want to get on board with? Yeah, we're going to show you the inside of a cell now. There's a mattress on the side. You can stick that onto the bed. Can you a cup of tea or anything? I'm all right, mate. Can you just ring my mummy? Yeah, we'll see if we can get you another one today. Okay. Uh, anyone else you need to call? No, that's okay, thank you. Yeah. Alright, see you in a bit.